When the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries and Russia first embarked on their strategy to clear a global oil glut, it was expected to succeed within six months. It now looks like the battle could last for years. The Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries and its partners plan to wrap up their production cuts next spring, already nine months later than originally expected. Yet oil prices are faltering again as data from the International Energy Agency show world inventories could remain oversupplied even after the end of 2018. ISI Energy LLC predicts that, rather than months, draining the surplus may take years. They're going to have to dig in for the long haul, Neil Atkinson, head of the International Energy Agency S Oil Markets and Industry Division, said in a Bloomberg television interview. Rebalancing is a stubborn process. Oil prices have lost 11% in London this year as the production cuts that OPEC, Russia and other partners started in January failed to disperse a world surplus. The producers will meet in November to decide whether further action is needed beyond spring 2018. The cutbacks have been undermined amid recovering output from OPEC members exempt from the deal Libya and Nigeria and as US shale producers prove they can keep drilling despite lower prices. Shale output will hit a record next month, the US government forecasts. As a result, OPEC's current production about 32.8 million barrel per day in July is higher than the amount needed for most of next year, the International Energy Agency's latest report showed on August 11. Instead of fulfilling its goal to reduce oil inventories to their five-year average, OPEC would potentially expand them further. The longer-term outlook also poses problems, according to consultants ISI Energy. Over the next five years, U.S. production will continue to expand, while growth in oil consumption slows, ISI predicts. New demand for petrochemical products, a key driver, will be met by products derived from gas. If OPEC wants to keep oil prices in the $50s and hit $60, the organization will have to keep a lid on supply for several more years, said Sarah Emerson, energy principal at ISI in New York. Still, the cutbacks by OPEC and Russia have shown some signs of success. Global inventories declined in the second quarter, bringing them closer to their five-year average, said the International Energy Agency, which advises most of the world's major economies on energy policy. A discount on immediate crude supplies has turned into a premium, suggesting markets are tightening. The inventory overhang is falling, the rebalancing process is underway. Stocks are obviously still high, but from a supply-demand perspective we were in deficit in the second quarter. The prospect of OPEC facing a longer struggle than expected dovetails with the views of some oil industry bosses. Better times might not return until the end of the decade. If OPEC is facing a challenge spanning years, the question is whether its members have the discipline. Their adherence to the pledged cutbacks slipped to 75% in July, the lowest since the accord began, as Venezuela, Iraq and the United Arab Emirates drag their heels in making required reductions, according to the International Energy Agency. Iraqi oil minister Jabar al-Uibai has said repeatedly the country is expanding production capacity and eager to use it. With Iraq looking to push up volume all the time, the outlook for 2019 is tricky. The pressure on the deal will remain.